They're too polite. There we go. You're being too polite. It's the Build Series. It's live. I'm Kevin Kenny. It's the fourth and Broadway. It's the whole shebang. And it is the holiday season here in New York City. And we have quite the gift for you. A, a breakout star, one of the biggest breakout stars of 2019. Over 6 million fans stream his music per month. Give it up for AJ Mitchell. <laughs> I should say give it up again. Yeah, there we go. We get it two times. <laughs> and we got like we got like the fashion police in the front row. Do you like the blue socks? Yeah, I think he's stunting with the blue socks. You know what? On camera, I think it looks pretty cool. Guys, this Not is no way shoes. to treat our guest. You don't think with the shoes either? You don't think with the shoes? I'm gonna have to do I'm gonna have to disagree with you guys. I think you're popping, one. dude. I got bleach all over me. See? Thank you. All right. I like the I like the furry though. Imagine. See? Even oh. when you insult AJ, he, yeah. uh, he compliments you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. But not the socks. It's okay. You're we'll work on it. Hey, who's uh, hosting this show? I think it's fun. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, as I was saying before we went live, though, AJ, it's so cool to see you in person because I work over at MTV, and you were recently honored yeah. as the Push Artist of the Month. So congratulations on that. That's Thank a you. huge honor. Thank you so much. Lizzo, yeah, huge honor. Billie Eilish, you. Yeah, it's it's incredible to be on that. I mean, with Billie Eilish and Lizzo, so it's incredible that you know that I was able to be the so cool. art, push artist of the year. Do you remember where you were? Not that you have to, but when you found out that you were going to receive that honor. Um, I think I was at my manager's house, and he was like, "Oh, by the way, um, MTV called and they want you to be the push artist of the month." I was like, "Wait, what?" I was like, "No way!" Um, and. And it happened. It's so cool. They're yeah. huge fans of you, man. All the, throughout the hallways, yeah. they love AJ. Oh, really? Yeah. That's amazing. I love MTV. And then you got to be a part of the VMAs this year, which I think is really cool. Oh, Your performance was... aired during the show. Yeah. Tell me about that experience. Oh, my God. That was one of the most surreal moments of my life. Like, I remember just, like, walking on the red carpet and even just, like, doing the performance. And um, I just remember, like, being, like, I remember watching this as a kid and, like, being, like, oh, it would be so cool if I was on the red carpet or if I was doing a performance of the VMAs and there I am doing a performance of the VMAs. So... It was just like a dream come true. No, I know Ava was there that night too. Did you get to see her? Yeah, I got to see her. That's we took cool. a photo together. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. She showed up as like a superhero. I yeah, I was like, Ava? <laughs> or uh, Superwoman? <laughs> exactly. Um, just There's probably been so many pinch me moments for you just this year alone. Run me through some other ones in addition to just the VMAs and receiving the push. And oh, man. Yeah, VMAs was crazy. Um, I would say the Vivo Lift yeah. um, campaign as well. They actually came to my hometown. And uh, we actually shot uh, um, a little like short um, music video for Unstoppable, not the official music video, um, but like at uh, my Skyview uh, at a Skyview drive-in movie theater, which is actually the name of my album that's dropping in top of 2020. And um, so that was really cool um, to do that in my hometown. Now, how important is your hometown to you? I mean, you, of course, you brought Vivo there to kind of document yeah. it, shoot the video. But then you, you're, I talk to artists all the time that drop their debut album. The title of your debut album is something you think about from the first time you started writing music as a kid. Yeah. And you, you, it needs to sort of encapsulate and capture who you are as, a, as an artist and a person. Why was it Skyview? Why was it your hometown? Yeah, I mean, I really just want, you know, my fans to know. I also want, you know, everyone in the world to know, like, who I am and kind of where I came from. Because I feel like a lot of people don't really know that side of me. They don't really know where I came from and, um, and that other side. And I feel like once they do, then they'll really understand, like, the music and where it's coming from. What did your hometown teach you or impart in you? What lessons do you point back and you go, oh, I learned um, that? I, I, feel, I feel like at a young age, I learned a lot of things that, you know, things that I didn't want to be a part of. Um, honestly, growing up, a lot of my friends were getting into drugs. Some of my friends were joining gangs. Um, some kids were, like, 18 years old, and they already have, like, three kids. And kind of seeing that, I was like... That's something I really don't want to be part of. That's something, like, when I saw that stuff, I would, you know, be inside most of the time. And that's when I would, like, write my music. And that's, you know, I'd write, I'd write about those situations of, you know, the things that I saw. And I think that's, you know, what kind of um, inspired me to write. Yeah. I mean, that's something that's at the top of your list when you're writing songs is that they're authentic and they're true to you, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's huge. I want to get back to these pinch me moments because they just, it's so cool just to even read or hear you talk about them. And you met Stevie Wonder. So I didn't get to meet him. Oh, you didn't get to meet him. I didn't him. get to meet him, but I saw him perform. You saw him perform. I saw okay. Him perform at the but Voice. I mean, no, who can say that? I mean, I've never seen Stevie Wonder perform. It was was the, it in the same? You were? It was at the Voice, right? Yeah, it was at the season finale. Okay, okay. cool. It what was, was him that like? And Ariana Grande doing like a little duet, and I was just like blown away. I was like, "That's Stevie Wonder." I was like, "It was it was the coolest moment of my life." Like, I love Stevie Wonder. You, um, I love his songs. You've got to leave there that night and just be so inspired. Yeah, so inspired, and uh, like Adam Levine was there, Miley Cyrus. Um, like Blake Shelton, they were all just sitting there. I was like, where am I right now? <laughs> surreal, I bet. So surreal. surreal. Um, what else inspires you as an artist? Of course, you leave something like that. It's so breathtaking. You probably just want to write for days, maybe. Yeah, I mean, I would say, like, everyday life. Like, um, 
every situation, like things that I see, relationships that I see, things that I go through, um, I think that's the easiest way for me to write is, you know, just writing about stuff that I've gone through. Yeah, totally. Uh, speaking of Stevie Wonder's dance part the partner that night, Ariana Grande, yeah. I heard you say in an interview that if you could bring Uh-oh. any artist to a deserted island, it would be Ariana Grande, AJ. Now, why in the world would you bring Ariana Grande to a deserted <laughs> island? Did I say that? You did. It's on video. Oh, I, guess, I don't think it's a bad choice. I applauded I mean, the selection. Honestly, but. I don't. I don't remember saying that, but I mean, that's not bad. <laughs> it's not a bad answer, I guess. <laughs> you guys would make music together. Yeah, we'd make music. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> with all your free time. Yeah. Um, maybe build a boat. Yeah, you know? exactly. Get yeah. off the island. Get off the island. Maybe we'll go back. Right. Come back. Perform at next year's VMAs. Yeah, exactly. See, you got the whole plan laid out. Yeah. Uh, you are an artist that is open to collaborations, though, which I think is really Absolutely. cool. And you list off a bunch during most interviews that you do. Who's at like the top of your mind these days? Oh man, I think uh, Billie Eilish. That would be yeah. a really cool collab. Um, oh yeah. Uh, I think Billie Eilish would be super cool. Um, oh man, who else? JID, mm. uh, rapper. He's so dope. Yeah. Um, so you know what I dig about you is that I think a lot of people, especially that make, a, you know, arguably pop music, mm-hmm. they'll say they like hip hop just to sound cool. Yeah. But you actually love hip hop. You grew up a huge Lil Wayne fan. Huge Lil Wayne fan. You have a Lil Wayne tattoo. Yeah. <laughs> which is crazy. And it's not like a small tattoo. I mean, I'm sure and you guys all know this, but like if you're watching home. It was actually the first tattoo I ever got. It's actually on my arm. Yeah, I was going to say, can we do it with the jacket? Yeah, there we go. Can first we get a tattoo. shot of that? First tattoo. I mean, that is a serious tattoo for your first tattoo. Yeah. And just explain the significance behind it. Yeah, so, I mean, this, this kind of resembles, like, to see the, str- uh, the beauty in the struggle. So, like, whenever I'm going through a hard time or, you know, it just reminds me that, you know, I'm going to learn something after it. Right. And, you know, always to see the beauty in the struggle. But isn't there a Wayne lyric where it's like, uh, my, also I wear my heart also on my sleeve? Also a little Wayne lyric. I wear my heart on my sleeve, so don't be breaking my arm. It's yeah, like, I love it's that. That's so lyric. slick, though, man. I dig that. Um, no, but you truly are, you know, a, a hip hop head and a fan of, of rap music. I mean, I was listening to Unstoppable, the new song. Yeah. And that, you call me crazy, that almost sounds like a 3 6 Mafia beat yeah. when it kicks in. Yeah, like it's, exactly. Like, it's like a Memphis hip hop kind of feel. Where do your influences uh, come from, in addition to Lil Wayne, if we're talking like rappers you really Yeah, enjoy? I mean, I love Eminem as well. Like, growing yeah. up, I loved Eminem. Um, but I kind of like. Drew inspiration from all over. Like when I was a kid, I was really into the Beatles. Okay. Um, I was really into Bruno Mars as well. Um, it was like different periods of my life where I was like, oh, I was in love with Bruno Mars. I love Coldplay, the Beatles. Then I got really into hip hop, like Lil Wayne. Um, That's like the best way to start, though. Is like sort of with that like classic foundation. Then, yeah. You, know, you become a teenager, you find out whatever your friends yeah. are into. But yeah, I was I was into all sorts of music. Even when I was like, I would say like six years old, my mom had a little iPod. And I would listen to like classical music, like Enya, or, or not, not like she's classical. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, like, I would listen to no, Enya is pretty or like classical, El Devo man. and just like like opera singers and just like so much random music. Like, but I love it all. I so love all d- music. Your dad wrote songs as a hobby. Yeah, as a hobby. So that I've never heard of that before. You know, sometimes you come from a songwriter, but what was his main gig? Like, what did he? Um, my dad's a nurse. Actually, okay. But, so um, then at home, he I think just this is so cool, though. Yeah. I mean, some people, you know, they, I don't know, they play golf for a hobby. Some dad. Yeah. That's where I grew up, <laughs> you know what I mean? But your dad wrote songs. So what would the songs be about that he would write? Um, he would write songs to my mom. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So that's where, is that where your romantic side comes from? I guess so. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> but then you so. would write you would write songs about like birds' knees. Yeah, two. Yeah, <laughs> when I was six years old, that was actually the first song I ever wrote. It's like two birds sitting in the tree, one fell off and broke his knee. I don't know the rest of the song. I feel like you know the song. You were saying you guys it. know this song, right? They're giggling you know like they never heard it, but can you sing it for us? Do you know the word? Uh, Who knows the words? <laughs> Who thinks they can sing it perfectly? AJ's first ever uh, song. You want to give it a go? She knows. You do? You want to give it a go? I don't know it. Oh, you don't know it. All right. <laughs> I don't think anyone knows it. We have a feisty front row. Yeah. Honestly. Was there much more yeah. other than that? Um, I, I'm sure there was. I yeah. can't remember it. And then my mom told me birds don't have knees. So I had to scratch that song. Crushing. Crushing. Yeah. What was that? They yeah, they have bones. I think I... <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> let's somehow get back to Unstoppable because yeah. I do this song. Um, talk to me about how it came to be, though. And just uh, you seem to be dropping songs almost monthly, if not quicker. Yeah, uh, Unstoppable being the latest, it seems like. Yeah, so Unstoppable kind of. So I was in the studio with one of my favorite writers, his name is Sam Romans, and we were just kind of sitting there, and I kind of had an idea for a music video first. I was like. Man, it would be super cool if we had like a marching band, like marching down the street, going like left, right, left, right. And 
I was like, that would be actually kind of cool in the production if there was like a left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. And so we actually started with that. Um, it was like me, we had the engineer go in, Sam Rubbins, we all went in the booth and we were like, left, right, left, right, singing it all in. It's your team effort. And um, so once we had that, then we started laying chords on it and then um, started. I just started throwing melodies down. And that's how the song came together. I, I saw you say recently that uh, if, if you were going to introduce you as an artist to a new fan, and maybe this di- the answer is different today, but it was at the time, talk so much. Yeah. You felt like that song maybe would be the best sort of explanation of who you were. <laughs> Why? Yeah. Why talk so much? What does that tell um, us about you? I would say now, uh, now I would say down in flames, but okay. I think at the time, uh, <laughs> talk so much, I, I think that was like also my newest song that I put up, put out. And I actually wrote that song because I think one day, my, well, one day my friend texted me and he was like, yo, I was at school and some people were just like talking about you in the hallway and it was like, not good things. And um, I was like, man, why do people talk so much? And I was like, oh, that's kind of a cool title for a song. So then um, next day I went to the studio and then I wrote that song. That's why are you trying to talk so much? Yeah. So now it's Down in Flames. Why that song now? Why would you say that's like the best introduction to AJ Um, I would say Down in Flames now because I think that's like one of the, that song I wrote because, so I wrote that song because th- it was the day that um, Notre Dame built, burned down. Right. And when I, I thought about it, I was like, man, it's crazy how a building, like, it can take hundreds of years to be built up to be so beautiful. And then in just a couple of hours, it can be burnt down. And then same day, um, two people that I knew um, were in a relationship and they got in a really bad argument. And I kind of pinned that with a relationship. It's like, it's crazy how a relationship can be built for so many years, but then in one bad argument, it can all go down in flames. And the next, and literally that day I went to the studio and I wrote the song called Down in Flames. I feel like you read a lot about relationships. Have you been in a lot of relationships? Um, I have. I've been like six relationships, I think. Wow. By 18? That's yeah, pretty good, 18. man. What's been your if longest count, relationship? Count, the, my last relationship was in fresh, was freshman year of high school. Okay. Oh, wow. So middle school you was like killing it. <laughs> middle dude. school. You got five yes. out of the way in I middle like, school? Yeah. <laughs> But those are the days you would, like, break up with a girl at recess for no reason. Yeah, You know exactly. what I mean? <laughs> but we would all do that. It was like the next day you had a girlfriend already. Exactly. Yeah. That's so funny. But I, you take, I take you to be a, a bit of an observer, too. So I'm sure you're, that, yeah, def- some of your songwriting is informed by the relationships you see around you. Yeah, exactly. So some can start from, like, from since things that I've been through or, like, things that I've seen. So Yeah. yeah totally. For someone that has such an eclectic uh, source of inspiration and such an eclectic taste in music, not do you worry, but how do you factor everything into the debut project so it doesn't sound disjointed? You find a cohesive message. That must be tough when you when you are as eclectic as you are. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, with the music that I write, I like I like writing music that I like listening to. Like I said before, you know, I like listening to all sorts of music, and I think with this album that's coming out, you can you kind of hear that. Like you have ballads like um, "I Don't Want You Back" or. Um, uh, down in flames, and then you have songs like "Talk So Much" and uh, uh, "Unstoppable" and "Say It Again" that are more like upbeat songs. And so, exactly, you get a bunch of uh, eclectic songs on, um, eclec- yeah, on uh, the album. Yeah. But um, I think that's just the artist that I am. I don't stick to one specific sound. Right. Right on, dude. I can't. Wait. And then early 2020. Early 2020. All right, cool. Fingers crossed. Yes, uh, all right, let's get to some fan questions here in New York City. The first is going to come from over here. Hey, man, how's it going? Good to meet you. So um, I remember one day I was doing homework, and I had Pandora on in the background. Yeah. And then all my friends came on. And then I had to, like, jump up Shazam and out because, like, that song hit different. You know? Yeah. And so <laughs> I was hit wondering, like, I love it. for you, like, when was the last time you heard a song that really inspired you? Oh, man. Um, the last time, you know, I would say I would say Down Bad by J.I.D. And that's what really got, like, when I heard uh, Down Bad by J.I.D. in, like, the uh, J. Cole album, I was like, that song is dope. Um, and I think that really inspired me. That's a great pick. Great question, too. Uh, time for one final fan question. It'll come from over here. Hey, Jay. How's it going? Good to great. see you. Great. How are you? <laughs> so um, what are your musical influences? My musical influences? Um, I kind of said them earlier. Um, like, growing up, I loved Coldplay, listened to the Beatles a ton, um, to Bruno Mars. I love Stevie Wonder, to, like, um, um, like Aretha Franklin. I mean, I loved all all sorts of music, like to country, to um, everything. What song or artist do you love that your friends give you crap about? Like maybe a guilty pleasure, maybe just like just a funny, silly song. Is there anything that comes to mind where you're like, dude, I know it's not a great song, but I love this song or I love this band? Um, nothing or something random that we would not guess about. AJ I Mitchell. mean, 
I'm not gonna lie, before I go to bed, I, I like listening to like, you know on Spotify how they have like deep sleep music? Yeah. That's right. that's all me. Right on. Yeah. I walk in the room, I walk in the room, I put on my speaker, I put on deep sleep music, and I just like get ready for bed. Freestyle over that. I feel like I'm at the spa, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Put some cucumbers on your eyes. Put some cucumbers on, lay down, yep, brush my Agreed. teeth. Eat one. No. Yeah, exactly. A little snack. Well, this is very exciting. The interview uh, portion of the show today is uh, is complete, but you are going to treat us to two different songs. That's right. Live right here on the Build stage. That's right. And do you want to tell us at least one of these songs you're going to do? Can you tease us a little bit? Um, Yeah, I'll say All My Friends. <laughs> okay, nice. Right on. You like that? Right on. Happy crowd, guys. Again, AJ Mitchell, Skyview, the debut project on its way in early 2020. Thanks so much, dude. This oh, is man. awesome. Thank you.